Hi everyone, welcome back to Curriculum Mapping with G Suite. Today's video I'm going to be covering making the leap from your Data Studio template to Data Studio. Now this video is long overdue and I appreciate those of you who have made the leap without the help of any proper documentation, but I hope this video helps demystify um, some of the uh, strategies for turning your Google Sheet into a Data Studio report. So here we go. In Data Studio, uh, the first thing we need to do is get, we need to connect it to our data source, which is a Google Sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new report. I'm going to give this one a name. All right, I'm calling it Curriculum Map, and I'm going to create a new data source. So in doing so, I have an option to connect it to a variety um, of data sources, and in this case, I want to connect it to Google Sheets. Now, um, it will list all of the spreadsheets I have in my Google Drive, and I'm going to go ahead and choose the Any School Data Studio file cabinet sidebar. And then I need to choose the specific sheet that contains my data. And I want to use the first row as headers and include any hidden or filtered cells. So then I will connect it. And then these are all the fields that will be added to my report. So I can click Add to Report. A uh, little warning about what's about to happen, and click Add to Report. And now they are available. Even though we don't see anything, all of those fields are available for me to build that report. So in the list of options along the top, one of them is the option to build a table. So you can click on that and draw sort of the size of the table that you want to create. I will just go right about just like that. And it will likely pre-populate with uh, some dimensions, uh, so on and so forth, but not all of them. So at this point, what you want to start doing is customizing your table and getting it into the way that the look and feel that you want. So if I were to peek back at my completed one, I notice that I have an image the title, the last updated. I want to start placing these fields um, in the order that I prefer. And these fields are located, the column here to the right, under Available Fields. So I know that I want the last updated field, so I can just add it there. I definitely want the start and end dates. And again, you can rearrange these after you've added them, so it's not a big deal if they end up in the wrong place at the beginning. I definitely will probably want to have an image at some point. And notice here how my image is just simply a URL at the moment. We're going to talk about creating calculated fields, which, which allows the images to display and also become hyperlinks. So. I'll probably need the URL to uh, get to the resource as well. I, again, another another uh, hyperlink that can look differently with calculated fields. So now to reorganize some of these things, I know I have start and end at the, the end of this. So I'm going to go ahead and move end down here, start take a peek. I have before that is grade level. So I'm going to take the grade level and I'm actually see it ended up here as a metric but I can actually just move this to become a dimension. So uh, grade level and then subject area. Put 
put it right there. All right, so this is starting to take shape. So once we've uh, started to build our, our table in the way that we want, uh, we need to create those calculated fields. So to do that, simply click on Create New Field. And this works a lot like Google Sheet formulas. So the first thing we're going to want to create is sort of the, the Google Doc icon. So if I just give it a, a name, I, this can be any name I want, but I can say Doc Icon. And I'm just going to take the image function. I'm sorry, image, and then use the image field that I have. So I do have a column called image as well. So what this function does is essentially turns that image into an image. And I'm going to save it and just click done. Now notice I have a field here called doc icon. So if I bring this one in, there's my doc icon. So now I no longer really need this image field because I'm going to replace that with my doc icon. By, you can remove any data dimension simply by clicking the X next to it. And again, for it to look nice, I want to move this at the beginning of my report. So here we are. Um, but now, if I actually view this, um, this, isn't any, this isn't a clickable source. So I need to now create another calculated field, which will actually take me to the unit planner located right here. So I'm going to keep editing this field. I click on my table, go back down to create a uh, new field, and this one I'm just going to call it uh, file. So I want to go to the file, and what I want to do with this one is hyperlink. And then it's asking, it's giving me some information. It says, oh, it needs a URL and then a link label. So in this case, the link label is going to be the image that we just created. So I'm going to start with the URL, and then I'm going to place a comma, and then I'm going to use the doc icon field. And just like that, um, we get the green, uh, the syntax is valid, so we can go ahead and add this function to our report. And click Done. Uh, and now the file dimension is available to us. So we'll go ahead and add this one to our report. And now look, we actually have two icons, but again, the difference between these is this one is clickable, this one is not. So we can now remove the, the doc icon uh, image as well. So now if we view our report, we see we've got uh, a link that will take us to the unit planner template for each of the various units. So this same concept applies to adding the filters. So you can then apply and build filters in your Data Studio template as well. The filter control is located right here. And I'm just going to quickly do one since these occur pretty quickly. So right now it's saying that this is a filter uh, for the title of the unit. Um, but that's typically not going to be a good filter because there's such a variety of uh, title names. So what, what, you, what you may want to do is add a filter for uh, subject area. So you can simply click on this and change the filter for whatever dimension you'd like. And then when you filter by that specific subject area, uh, it'll bring back only the specific uh, unit planners that match that filtered criteria. So 
Uh, in addition to working with the data, you can also adjust some of the style pieces. So notice how subject area is cut off in the table. You can actually word wrap the columns. So if I go to style and I can say the table header, go ahead and wrap the text. Now I can see the entire top of the table. Um, I can also wrap the text of the body too. So like all of these URLs that are appearing, um, I can go ahead and remove those. So this one I would actually remove entirely because that's already linked to the file. So let me first go here and remove the URL. And I'm going to go ahead in the style and make sure I'm wrapping any text that appears there as well. And then you can just make final adjustments to the size of each of the columns. They don't have to be the same. And soon enough, uh, you'll have a functioning Data Studio table. Um, again, this is just a quick how-to. Um, I hope this is helpful for you in moving from your Data Studio template to the actual Data Studio report. And then, of course, to embed, the last piece you need to do is uh, enable um, Oops, I'm sorry, you have to enable embedding. So it says, you click this little, these little carrot symbols and say embed report, enable embedding, and then you get this iframe that you can customize the size. And this is what you would then paste into your Google site to have it display um, for your Google site. And before I leave you, one last, uh, uh, one last piece of editing you can do is these column names are actually quite customizable. So um, simply by clicking on the pen, you can change the name. So if I didn't want um, this to say title, maybe I wanted to say unit, I can click that and type in unit. And then now I have unit being the name, the display name of the column. So you have complete control over the display names as well. So there you have it. This is uh, Google Sheets to Data Studio. And um, look forward to seeing more of your implementations and hearing about how it's going, especially at the beginning of the school year where everyone is so busy. Thanks for watching and hope you have a great day. Bye.